the editing cave. As a wedding photographer of 12 years, I've been there. The early starts before daylight, getting started wearing your dressing gown. You neglect your emails because you've got editing to do. You don't do any marketing because you've got editing to do. You drink lots of coffee because you've got editing to do. Lunch comes and goes. You're still in your dressing gown. You guessed it because you've got editing to do. But what about your life? How about spending some time with your kids, playing paddle with your mates, just chilling on the sofa, or jumping on the bike and doing some cardio? So what if I told you that it doesn't have to be that way? If you're here for the first time, welcome, but where on earth have you been? It's great to have you here. Pull up a chair, make yourself at home. Some housekeeping first though. If this video brings you some value and entertainment, please like, comment, subscribe, share, comment below, I've said subscribe twice, that no, I've said comment twice, I don't know. Basically, just do all the things that let me know I should keep doing this because I'm still a YouTube baby and I just need a, you know, kind of little bit of reassurance. Thank you very much. If you are new here, I'm Sam, a wedding photographer and educator based in the UK. I run an online course aimed at helping wedding photographers take their business to the next level. Having shot weddings over the past decade from London to the Cotswolds, France, Italy, Ibiza, and plenty, plenty more. In this episode, we're looking at how you can improve your efficiency whilst editing in Lightroom. Because if you've any experience as a wedding photographer, you'll know only too well that the bulk of your time isn't spent actually shooting weddings. It's here, sat behind the screen, editing those images. And you don't earn your money editing. I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's important and it matters, right? But ultimately you're paid to capture images and moments. It's also worth noting that your time has a value it's either a financial value or a time value. And we don't work to work, we work to live, right? And if it's taking you two, three or four days to edit a full gallery, you're losing out on both. It's as simple as that. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing my top five tips on how you can increase the speed and efficiency at which you edit your client's images. The things that I do that allow me to edit a full gallery in half a day. And the last one is a real tester and perfect for any of you out there that get easily distracted during the edit so stick around for that one. Before we dive in, it's just vital to stress here that being efficient should never come at the cost of quality. I do not cut corners. I still hold my images to a very high standard and level of expectation, but I'm also here to run a business. And I'm gonna show you how I keep that level of work super high, but spend less time glued to the screen because of these steps. And that really just gives me more time to play paddle. So win-win. Now, anyone who has watched one of my videos before and followed this journey from the very start, I've got a little milestone to share with you all. Proof that you can do something if you stick to it and keep plugging away. This video has got a sponsor. My first sponsored video. And I couldn't be happy to announce that it's Imagine, a tool that I now could not live without. Like, where have you guys been all of my life? If you haven't used Imagine to help you increase your productivity yet, prepare to be blown away. This app has without doubt cut the time I spend editing a gallery in half, no exaggeration. I'm not gonna go into how or why just yet because it might be one of the points in the video. But thank you so much to the team at Imagine for supporting this new journey of mine. And honestly, I don't think I'd be here trying YouTube if it wasn't for the app that you've produced. So thank you very much. If you check the description below, they've kindly given you all a link that gets you 1500 free edits if you sign up. That's what, like two full wedding galleries, edited for free. Absolute madness. Right, step number one, the import process. So before we even begin editing our images, the point at which we start making adjustments needs to be halfway there. What I mean by that is, I want the bulk of my universal changes to every image to already have been applied. And this is where a preset comes into play. Now I like to see my preset as a base grade to my image. It gets halfway there by applying color corrections through HSL, some basic exposure adjustments such as contrast, highlights, shadows, etc. You should never see a preset as a one-click solution to editing an image. There are always individual adjustments to make once the preset is applied. For example, my preset never adjusts white balance or tint. That's a change I make once I start the editing process. And as an extra benefit, presets also bring a level of consistency to your work, making sure tones and colors are consistent across an entire gallery. Now, I'm not gonna demo how to build or install a preset, that's something you can find out easily enough. But what I want to stress is the importance of making sure that when you bring your images into Lightroom, that you apply that preset on import. If you're constantly selecting an image, then clicking your preset, or even worse, individually editing that image from scratch, 
That time is just time you've wasted. Build and save your preset, then at the stage of adding your images to the Lightroom catalog, in the top right of the window, just navigate to develop settings, find your preset and import. This will now build your images into Lightroom with those common changes, your base grade applied. Step number two, which is linked to this import stage, is to build smart previews. So smart previews are simply a smaller version of that raw file that Lightroom builds and stores in an extra file in your catalog. Two key reasons that we build smart previews. One, and the reason for this video, Lightroom can edit them quicker. Secondly, if you store your Lightroom catalog in Dropbox, you have an online backup of those images because Lightroom doesn't need to see the raw file. You can still export an image at 2,600 pixels wide, even without access to the hard drive that holds your raw files. Little bonus for you there. And all you do here, again, on the import window, just select Build Smart Previews in the top right, and Lightroom will create a smart preview file of that image in your catalog location. And the added bonus here is that once you've imported those images and the smart previews are built, you can power down and rest your hard drives. They can go to sleep. The only time you need the hard drive to be on is when you're ready to export the high-res edits. This is great if you're editing on a laptop or MacBook because you can edit on the go without needing the hard drive. Step number, step number three, and it's time for our sponsor to take center stage, imagine. So I've already talked about presets, how they get my image 50% of the way to the finish line. Imagine is the tool that takes that image and makes the further changes I'd commonly make after the preset has been applied by learning from me and the final adjustments that I regularly make. And by doing this, the app builds my AI profile. It's not a preset. I like to see a preset as like a fixed recipe. The amount and ingredients are precise and accurate. They never change. But an AI profile allows for movement and flexibility, which basically means that it can understand changing light in a scene, for example, or user errors such as underexposed frames or wonky lines. Yes, I hold my hands up, I take wonky photos. It doesn't matter how hard I try, and don't tell me that you don't either. I know that you do. Now, it's important to stress here for me, I don't process my images through Imagine and then start the export. There is still some work to do, but I have to admit, Imagine, compared to the first time I used it in beta, is terrifyingly good at knowing how I edit my images. It used to get my images to 85, 90% of the way, now it's 98% of the way. It's absolutely staggering. Before I started this video, I put a gallery through Imagine. Stephanie and Chris, 863 images, each one will have my AI profile applied, each one will be straightened out, and each one will have a subject mask applied. To process that entire gallery through Imagine from start to finish, from uploading the project to opening Lightroom with the updated images, took just under 38 minutes. Now, I wouldn't just sit there and wait 38 minutes. I'd use that time to do something productive like marketing, social media, blog a wedding, the things that bring in business. Obviously for this video, I did pretty much wait and just watch, but I did get some peanut butter on toast. I think I checked in on the latest score in the ashes and I moved a chair because the one I had was really squeaky. So, but usually I'd recommend doing some other work or just hitting the gym, something that will make you or your business stronger. A couple of features I absolutely love about Imagine. If you haven't used the subject mask feature yet, you really need to. It allows you to isolate the subject and make changes to just that subject, which is a hugely powerful recent Lightroom edition and it's now out of beta with Imagine. I think it's one cent per image to apply, which for the UK audience here, isn't even one penny. I mean, it's just a no brainer. Secondly, they've also added AI profile adjustment. So if you wanna make a universal change to your AI profile, or you want the profile to edit a certain slider more or less than it currently does, you can change it. You just visit your AI profile, go to adjust AI profile, and then you have access to every slider in Lightroom. Here you can either make a correction up or down, which tells the profile to increase or decrease the amount it's currently using that slider, or a fixed value, which is much more like a preset as it will apply that specific value to every image, regardless of how it sees the image. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Again, if you haven't tried or used Imagine yet, go check out the link in the description below. You've got 1500 free edits to try it out. And trust me, you'll wonder why you waited so long once you've integrated it into your workflow. Remember, it gets you time back and lots of it. How you use that time, entirely up to you. I couldn't live without it now. Step number four, stop using the mouse, this pesky little thing here. If you are using this to adjust sliders in Lightroom, you aren't editing quickly enough. And for me, this is where keyboard mapping is a game changer. 
I use pfixer through pusher labs unfortunately pfixer recently early in 2023 announced it would no longer be maintained gutted so unfortunately i can't recommend it but i'm hoping that loop deck see this video soon and hit me up to test out one of their little editing consoles that would be that would be nice i'd like that that'd make me happy ultimately you want something that sits like a keyboard and is mapped to those sliders using a mouse just requires far too much accuracy and concentration compared to pressing buttons or turning dials you want the power to be at your fingertips on the desk, not by scrolling up and down a screen, trying to find that one slider you need with a mouse. Now, if like me, you've put your images through Imagine and they're back in your catalog, this stage is all about fine tuning. I still look at every single image I deliver and make very subtle changes. But again, the edit is so close to the finished product with the help of Imagine that these changes are minor. Last but not least, a little test for you all. Step number five, the 20 second timer. Now, I haven't used this for a while, but it's a great training exercise and a brilliant way to keep you focused during an edit session. I have an app on my phone called Seconds, and in there I built a 30 minute program. And every 20 seconds, a timer goes off. And I challenge myself to stick to making those changes within that 20 second window. If it's taking you two to three minutes to edit each image, and you've got 800 images to edit, that's a long time. And that might be why it's taking you three days to edit. You can edit quicker. Right, I genuinely hope this video has given you some ideas on how you can speed up your editing time in Lightroom. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other hacks that you find super useful and if any of these tips have helped you. Remember, go and subscribe for more. And if you're a wedding photographer looking to up your game, go check out some of my other videos, such as this one that demonstrates how to capture shutter drag, I have to really slow down when I say that, images on a dark dance floor every single time. Thanks for stopping by. I'm off to play some paddle.